Hello, Valentin. How are you doing? Hello, Peter. Nice to see you. So tomorrow is the third recital, and we are having a nice program here, this time without a dominant major work. But of course, it's not just a bundle of nice pieces. I know you have selected in a very sophisticated way these pieces. So please uh, explain us, share with us what you thought when you put together this selection. Well, first we have the Haydn Sonata, which carries on from a concert we had four weeks ago when I played the first movement. And uh, such a lovely sonata and a nice opening for the concert. Um, so this time I'm playing the second and third movements so of completing the sonata. But after that, we have a, a, a bit of a romantic journey. All the four composers, Schubert, Brahms, Rachmaninoff, and Chopin are romantic composers. And I've tried to give it a nice arc that goes through the, the pieces. Um, so when you, when you hear the Schubert impromptu um, in E flat, it, it actually, interestingly enough, finishes in minor, but it finishes with two notes at the top, a D and an E flat. So you'll hear these two chords. And these are the two notes, the D and the E flat, yeah, here at the top. Now, when you start the Brahms Rhapsody, you'll also hear D and E flat, an octave lower down here. So it starts like this. And um, so there's, there's a nice connection between the, the two pieces. Um, the Brahms then finishes in G minor with a massive chord. Yeah. And that leads to a lovely contrast with the Rachmaninoff, which starts in G major and very different. With a lovely melody. And so on, yeah. Um, and... Uh, so from the G major, we then go to the G sharp minor prelude, and Rachmaninoff played both of these together at their first performance. They're very special to him. Um, and the G sharp, so we go from G major to G sharp minor, which is that's the beginning of the Rachmaninoff. Now the G sharp will give us, the, if you, you can call it an A flat, it's the same note, and that will give us the raindrops for the raindrop prelude. Is these, this is what you'll hear at the beginning of the raindrop prelude. And then yeah. the, the raindrop prelude um, um, is then followed by the Walton A flat major. That's also an A flat, the same raindrop idea. And that rounds off the program. It's a big wow. journey of light and shade. We visit some of the darker sides Romanticism as well, yeah. But it all finishes with a with a very bright mm -hmm. waltz. I see an enharmonic switch from Rachmaninoff to Chopin. So, uh, going a little bit deeper into this raindrop uh, prelude. I mean, first question you already mentioned in the other recitals that the Moonlight Sonata wasn't called Moonlight by Beethoven. The pathetic same story was not Beethoven's name choice. Did Chopin at least name the prelude raindrop prelude? No, he didn't. The name goes back to his girlfriend at the time, uh, Georges Sand. She was a famous novelist. You can see her there, actually, um, in her portrait. Um, and they had traveled to Mallorca to live in an abandoned monastery. Um, at least that's where they ended up. Um, and she was there with her two children and Chopin, and they they, uh, they spent the entire winter in Mallorca. And um, Chopin had just recovered from a from well, he had nearly died basically. So he he was suffering from what you would call post traumatic stress disorder. So um, he was still recovering, and 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 Chop and Jocelyn took her two children on a long trip throughout the day and they came back in the evening when it was dark and raining and they found Chopin in a state of terror and he had been playing these lugubrious pieces and, and Georges Saint claimed that he had been listening to the rain falling on the monastery and, and those raindrops had found their way 
into his peace. <laughs> but Chopin protested and said that he hadn't actually heard the raindrops at all. And um, uh, so really the name again is just spurious. Ah, very interesting. So if it was not just about rain, because Jean Saint was in the rain and he was in the house, so uh, what was it then that he had in his thoughts when he composed this piece? Do well, you know? of course, as I said, he was recovering from a near-death experience. And, and uh, um, the, the piece that did inspire him is also closely, certainly in the romantic eye, connected to death and that is the first movement of the moonlight sonata which begins and we hear this repeated note here this one and that in, in Beethoven's case is a G sharp but in Schoenfels it's an A flat still the same note and those are actually what George Saint heard as the raindrops but to Chopin, they had a much more terrifying meaning. Because these repeated notes in the Moonlight Sonata are known as the death knell. And the death knell had certainly been ringing for Chopin. And in the middle of the prelude, of the raindrop prelude, those G sharp, those A flats turn back into G sharps. And there's a very uh, mysterious bass appearing underneath these notes. monk's choir singing away down in the bass here. There are no high voices of course because they're monks. And the harmony is very quite near this sound, especially this what we call an open chord. Now it's quite a, a typical medieval sound that he uses on purpose. Now these monks, as they sit chant, their chants grow louder and louder. And of course, there's one event that they are preparing for during their entire life. And it is what we call Judgment Day, when trumpets will announce the final judgment, where everyone has, will be judged on whether they'll be going to heaven or to hell. And you can hear that Chopin has actually composed that. So when, when these, these monks start singing, and it goes louder, So you have a major chord representing heaven and a minor one representing hell. this one more time, this, 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 these, these trumpets of, of, of Judgment Day. And then there is what, we, what I call a chorus of the penitent. Because of course these monks and perhaps humanity itself is pleading for one last chance at redemption. And here they come. That would actually take us back to the beginning of the piece, but instead Mm-hmm. 
a way between these, the, if you like, the walls of the monastery. Returns to this to this opening, which to me doesn't sound rainy at all. It sounds actually quite sunny and beautiful. Because at the beginning of their stay in Mallorca, it had actually been sunny, and Chopin had written back to his friend saying that he was in paradise, and that was of course before he fell ill. And as this this prelude finishes these A flats, they come to a sudden halt with the Vita Dandel on this chord. And that's the end of the prelude. And I'll be playing the next prelude, the B flat minor, which is the key of Chopin's funeral march. And here he also he unleashes the furies of hell. So after this peaceful ending, you will suddenly hear and so on. You will hear that tomorrow. Very nice. Thank you, Valentin. We are all looking forward to tomorrow. Thanks for this introduction to the piece. I think we will hear it in a different manner. Thanks to this explanation. Wish you a nice afternoon and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.